Okay, it's being recorded. So welcome everyone uh, to the Jenkins Configuration as Code so Project Async Lab. It's uh, August 28th. Uh, today we have only two people on the call, uh, me um, and Sladin, who is a community bridge intern working on GCASP developer tools. So since uh, there is not that many people, uh, we will adjust our agenda to focus on the sub-project. I will still do a quick update regarding new releases because uh, there are some important changes. And after that, we will just proceed uh, with community breach and uh, all other topics will move uh, to the next meeting where hopefully we will have uh, more people. Um, yeah, so Joseph isn't here today. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, I mentioned this grid? Uh, yep. 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 The yeah, configuration as uh, code. Mm, okay, so we had uh, two releases uh, since uh, the previous meeting. Um, one uh, release, so yeah, last time we talked about security fixes, then uh, there was uh, some delay. So we had uh, release 1.28, which release was mostly about uh, maintainability. You may see that uh, there were uh, many changes in developer tools. For example, now we have Dependabot enabled, uh, we have uh, uh, some tweaks in change logs, uh, etc. But yeah, really, all of the uh, these things were about maintenance. Uh, what uh, really changed in this release is uh, removal of the uh, Vault uh, secret management. Uh, so before this release, you were able uh, to use Vault as a secret source uh, just by installing uh, Jenkins configuration as code plugin. Unfortunately, there were some issues with that, like uh, client library conflicts. Uh, with HashiCorp Vault plugin, and basically it was quite odd uh, to have a dependency on a Vault functionality then in generic configuration code plugin anyway. So we made a decision to move the functionality to the plugin directly. So now if you use Vault as a secret source for JCASP, you should be using uh, um, a Vault plugin uh, directly. So yeah, there is a HashiCorp Vault plugin. Um, uh, Joseph Patterson uh, took ownership of this plugin, so basically it's uh, kind of maintained by the JCASC team at the moment. And here you can see that uh, there was a new release to 5.0, so yeah, there uh, were some changes in addition uh, to JCASC, but yeah, basically you need to install this version uh, to keep using uh, Vault uh, as a secret source inside JCASC. Um, this is a major change, uh, so keep it in mind. And after that, uh, we also had uh, another release uh, related to uh, secret sources. It's 1.29. Uh, so we had uh, one uh, issue report submitted in the community that uh, um, should, uh, that uh, there are issues with uh, password resolution. Actually, it was a long-standing issue, but it was uh, hidden because before version 1.29, um, at 24, we didn't have uh, any kind of logging for uh, unresolved secrets. So once we got this logging, some users started getting notifications. And finally, we ended up uh, with uh, the discovered uh, uh, bug, uh, which is basically related to uh, initialization of uh, secret sources. Uh, so yeah, you can uh, see the fix is pretty simple, but yeah, basically some secrets were resolved too late. Uh, which could have impacted all kinds of configuration management. So yeah, it was um, a fix uh, submitted in version 1.29. It's also available to users, and yeah, you can see that now there are also uh, dependable updates. So we use uh, um, uh, release automation nowadays, and yeah, all dependencies will be kept up to date. So that's it. Regarding uh, the incoming changes, well, basically there are not that many incoming changes at the moment um, in terms of merged uh, functionality, but uh, there is some work in progress changes. One of the changes is about uh, schema generation. So Sladen will be talking about it uh, a bit later. Uh, and then uh, there is another change, which is uh, rather about quality of life. So there is a lot of uh, plugins using JCASP as a test dependency or as a configurator API dependency. So what uh, is uh, Joseph Patterson doing at the moment is adding uh, Jenkins configuration as code to a uh, plugin bill of materials. Uh, it's a new project uh, which has been developed by JCB League at the moment. So it's uh, in evaluation phase, but uh, it uh, declares dependencies 
and uh, uh, versions for many plugins, and now we also include configuration as code there. So it's here. Basically, it's work in progress, but uh, yeah, hopefully it will be integrated soon and it will simplify maintenance for all uh, plugin developers. Oh, uh, we actually have uh, Joseph on the call. Yes. Joseph, would you like to add something about that? Uh, uh, yeah, there's some issues, of course, but luckily okay. plugin tester caught those, or plugin compatibility tester caught those, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So, so, what else do we have in the list? Uh, yeah, so dependable updates have been uh, integrated, so this part is completed. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any other major activities inside uh, the plugin right now? Uh, we've, I guess we've finished up, uh, or I finished up HashiCorp Vault uh, migration. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, you covered that already? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we also fixed a initialization issue, thanks to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this part we already talked about. Okay. Um, okay, uh, so regarding uh, the rest uh, we have in the list, oh, we have four people on the call, so I guess we can just switch to the full agenda. <gasps> yeah, because originally when we started, we, have, <laughs> we had only two people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what else uh, we have in the pull request? So let's see. Doesn't look like, uh, so yeah, we still have uh, this uh, to don the system configuration permissions, but I guess it's blocked on the Jenkins core changes. Yeah, and I also think Tim is, or Tim is uh, on vacation or something, right? Yes. So, yeah. yeah. But that mm. would be super awesome. Uh, read only, yeah. Yeah, so one thing about that is that yeah, Jenkins core uh, patch hasn't been integrated yet. So yeah, there is upstream patch. Um, and yeah, we have a LTS baseline uh, selection today. So yeah, it's safe to say that it won't get uh, into the current LTS. And the AT in Jenkins LTS will be December. Wow. Yeah, oh, that's how it works. So maybe it would be nice to, get it though. Uh, to think about uh, splitting uh, configurator API and other stuff. Mm. So yeah, this fix will like stay around for a while. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi. Hello. Yeah, would you like to introduce yourself? Because it's uh, the first time you're at the call. Maybe he's just listening in. Awesome. Yeah, no problem. Okay. okay, so yeah, this one uh, will likely uh, get stuck for a while, but yeah, on the other hand, it, uh, it uh, gives us opportunity to finalize this change because yeah, from what I see, yeah, there is still a lot of bits to, uh, to integrate here. Um, and yeah, let's see whether we can resource that somehow. <sighs> I would be really happy if we have uh, this fix for the next LTS and maybe also uh, initialization milestones fix in the Jenkins code because then uh, it will put uh, change uh, the stability of uh, Jenkins dramatically for users. Especially for job DSL. Uh, I, yeah, that, that is actually something that's still blocking. Uh, there was the people came back and said it's still an issue with the yeah, right. so, yeah, job DSL yeah. being, yeah. Yeah, there was a recent report from James North about uh, uh, leaving, uh, running too early in the life cycle. Oh, I missed this apparently. It's loaded. <sighs> yeah, so I currently believe it's basically the same as uh, the old issue we had about chicken and egg. So basically, you need to do something about uh, the milestones. <gasps> We cannot move it after jobs loaded because after that it will start conflicting through unit hooks. It's probably even worse, so I think we need a solution in the It would be awesome if we could introduce something for, for job DSL to hook into as well. Oh. So it would come after. So, yeah, or come in later in the initialization steps. Yeah, so basically what's, uh, what would be my preference is that we first have a kind of pre-initialization step here. <gasps> Uh, I mean, milestones, so all three initialization logic can run here. 
uh, post initialization after jobs loaded. So there would be two additional milestones which nice. we should use. Uh, and maybe even uh, two milestones after jobs loaded, because again, uh, we still have issue with uh, Groovy hooks and JCask. Uh, oh, right, yeah. Yeah, because whatever we do, we need to somehow prevent uh, conflicts of them <gasps> and to retain uh, the current behavior when uh, Groovy hooks run only after JCask. Otherwise, it will be a massive uh, regression for users. So it's yet to be seen how we do it, but my understanding is that we actually need three milestones with fancy names. <gasps> mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Basically no. Uh, can that. you hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> so uh, short introduction for myself. Uh, my name is Daniel Esterman. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah just like, I was born uh, on Crimea in Russia, and oh. now I live in Zurich in Switzerland. I work for TI and Dem, uh, and for a DevOps team, and we use as well Jenkins and uh, GitLab runners. Mm -hmm. So I am uh, much responsible for Jenkins. We shortly migrated for usage of uh, configuration scope plugin intensively and I also support it by contributing for plugin compatibility and stuff and I'm very interested in uh, uh, development of it. Mm -hmm. That's it for my side. <laughs> yeah, so welcome and yeah thanks a lot for your interest. Uh, so yeah one comment about uh, Switzerland. Uh, so we, I plan to organize a hackathon in early October um, with JCask as a topic. So it might be something interesting to you. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, probably send hand, heads up later once uh, the date is set. But it will be like the beginning of October, most likely in Neuchâtel. Though, yeah, maybe in Zurich. Okay. Yet to be okay. Uh, sounds interesting uh, and keep me keep me informed yeah okay and yeah thanks a lot uh, for reporting uh, and fixing uh, the regression and uh, loading okay mm, so anything else to discuss about ongoing development mm. um yeah i started talking about uh, wanting to get back to the deprecation of plugins so yeah that would be Nice to to get get around to, hopefully, and I'll I'll see if I can. I'll probably start with a mailing list and see if I can get some feedback and then do a chat if I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be appreciated. It would be really nice to have this feature actually, because it yeah it's annoying to have plugins that just keep gaining in installs because people read old documentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, the documentation forward? Uh, well, I've seen people read like some of the blog posts for JCask and then they come around asking, well, the support doesn't work, blah, 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 and all those things, right? Oh. So, so they install old plugins for some reason and th th nothing works and they're like confused. So, so I want to, I want to fix the deprecation issue and have like the same as like warnings, right? Or security warnings. Okay, so so it means that uh, our LTS wish uh, list. Uh, yeah. But maybe this could just be start out as a plugin. Like it, it's it's. I it, I hate having stuff in the Jenkins core, but it could be a recommended or re recommended install or something, or something that it just decides I'll put this in. Could be a module. I don't know. I, I just. Mm -hmm. For older releases as well, it would be nice to just have it in working. So it's not locked to the latest LTS. Okay, return the system configurations, uh, milestones. Uh, yeah, so in this case, unfortunately, it will likely have to be in the Jenkins core because otherwise. Most, most likely. <laughs> Yeah, I understand, but um, let's see. Um, definitely, it, it'll be nice to have, at least for sure. Mm 
to, to deprecate plugins and get them uninstalled. Okay. So we yeah, are speaking of another side of this issue about uh, documentation. So there is another project which probably worth sharing. It's about uh, um, uh, publishing GitHub documentation uh, on plugins during SIO. Because now, if you want, uh, if you go to configuration as code, uh, so here you can see well basically that. And uh, apparently, we see that not uh, that many people go there, and uh, yeah, it's a case for many plugins. So there is ongoing activity for having uh, plugin app updates that uh, supporting um, um, GitHub as a source. Uh, so yeah, it's, this activity is a part of documentation uh, sub project, um, but yeah, it's uh, still uh, something which is really related to JCASC. So Zbigniew Konechny is one of the contributors. Uh, he basically proposed uh, a patch for the plugin side which does that and uh, yeah right now yeah, we spent some time uh, to finalize uh, this patch so it's technically ready to go um, and uh, with some patches um, you get uh, github um, documentation listed on plugin side so yeah it's basically this patch mm, yeah so mm, yeah there are yeah, basically, after some patches and follow-ups, uh, it looks like um, that. So this is a uh, polling of um, the folder-based authorization plugin created by Abuda. Uh, but basically, this information is picked from uh, GitHub with all badges, with uh, images. And uh, yeah, we will have the same for JCast hopefully soon. So now we are just waiting for infrastructure team because we need the GitHub API tokens. Uh, to make it really work because we need to pull the data from GitHub and yeah, we, in an anonymous mode, it's not going to end well. Mm, so, yeah, mm, it's uh, staged uh, and yeah, once it's ready, it will be available for um, JCASC. And once it's done, yeah, it's a part of Big Epic, which also includes stories like uh, publishing change logs and other things on the plugin side. Uh, so, yeah, I hope that uh, all of these bits will be ready maybe in one month. So we will have JCAS documentation also republished on plugin sites. Hopefully it will help some users. And yeah, my end goal is actually to have the documentation also in Jenkins Update Center. So that, uh, for example, features like removal of plugins, etc., they will be highlighted uh, right inside the Jenkins. That would be nice. Well, Still something to do in order to make it possible. Uh, yeah, most likely it will require some Jenkins core patches as well, but yeah, uh, it's in my wish list. Uh, the integration uh, for GitHub releases. Get to be seen how, how it will work, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And the plugin type. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that's all with ongoing development. It looks like we have quite a list of things. Okay. Okay. Let's go into the next topic, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so, I just put it here. And maybe it makes sense uh, to put it uh, to the developer mailing list uh, to kickstart uh, the discussion. So, but yeah, probably I'll do that. Uh, yeah. Because if you want some additional text to some of the topics, maybe just uh, ping me. Okay. Well, just put it here if you want uh, okay. something. Uh, send it to the dev list. Uh, let's say on September 2nd or so. Okay. Yeah, well, if you learn for these features, it would be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Um, okay. Mm, so, other topic I wanted to discuss is about uh, moving to platform threshold interest group. 
so just uh, to provide some context in uh, Jenkins project, we have a number of special interest groups, uh, which yeah, you can see some groups like advocacy, outreach, cloud native, documentation, Google Summer of Code, platform, etc. And uh, the problem that uh, no, not all of these um, special interest groups are really active nowadays. Um, when uh, we started Cloud Native Special Interest Group, um, we had some discussion with Evelyn and other stakeholders about having uh, Jenkins reputation as code as a part of Cloud Native Special Interest Group. So if you scroll down here, you can see that uh, this reputation as code is here. Uh, one problem with the special interest group that, well, basically it's not active. Um, and another problem that uh, JCASC is not only about cloud native, it's basically used everywhere as a part of the platform. So my thought was that what if we actually move it uh, to the platform uh, special interest group? Uh, platforms. So this group is currently focused on packaging, on support of operating systems. Uh, but uh, yeah, there is high interest in uh, Jenkins configuration as code today as well. Uh, so, for example, Mark Wade uh, is active contributor, but he's is heavily using uh, JTask uh, in the projects. And yeah, basically, all of the people here somehow showed up in JTask channels as well. So, why we're we thinking about moving it uh, here? Um, but yeah, so it's something uh, for the discussion. So, for in Platform Seek, we have regular meetings every two weeks on Thursdays. So, I guess it would not change anything for the project specifically except maybe periodic updates at the platform C. So I just wanted to pull for opinions. What do you think about it? It makes sense to move it. That's all we can say really. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, Oleg, are you the only one working on cloud native right now? Uh, well, the proper answer is that I'm not working on cloud native. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm listed here, I guess. Yeah, I'm listed here. I was working on some uh, things for pluggable storage. So just okay. up in the Gitter channel a while ago because, yeah, Joseph referenced uh, this page. Okay. I see that uh, there is a number of activities which were originally planned, um, but yeah, but it didn't happen. There are many reasons why, and I cannot share all the reasons on this call, but yeah, basically what was happened, we delivered artifact management. There is some infra interest in uh, configuration sources. So it's not uh, configuration sources we were discussing with you, Slavia. It's rather generic uh, configuration source. So yeah, okay. obvious overlap between uh, these stories. So there is okay. a job which was submitted. Um, uh, but yeah, this, uh, this story is told. So this job was submitted basically by me, uh, just to summarize uh, the discovery results we had. And yeah, there were some uh, contributors interested, like uh, Alex Nordlund uh, from Sweden, from Stockholm, yeah, and um, other people. But yeah, this job uh, uh, is our reference implementation at the moment. Uh, do 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 cloud native meetings happen biweekly? They don't. Okay. And that's why I cool. said that uh, this uh, seek is okay. not So the last uh, meeting, I mean, uh, the scheduled meeting was, I guess. Uh, yeah, in March. Then there was uh, a meeting at, uh, well, uh, yeah, at KubeCon um, in May, uh, but uh, yeah, it was face to face and uh, that's it. Okay, good. Yeah, there are some meetings. I think about recovering the special interest group, uh, but even if I recover this special interest group, I, to be honest, I'm not sure that the uh, configuration of code is well fit there. Maybe it's better for platform. Yeah, cool. Sounds so, interesting. Yeah, it's just thinking out loud uh, for now. Uh, but yeah. uh, maybe we. So if it helps configuration as code project to get more visibility, more contributors, and more collaboration with other projects, 
Because, for mm -hmm. example, there are obvious in, uh, opportunities for integration into Docker. So, a part of uh, what uh, uh, Natasha Stoppa was working on her JSOC project. Uh, yeah, yeah. Peak, uh, there are more opportunities for that. Um, in uh, Cloud Native Seek, uh, yeah, for example, if we talk about uh, official Jenkins Helm charts, then yeah, it's Cloud Native Seek. And again, uh, there are opportunities for collaboration there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, yeah, so JCASC is basically a part of every Seek nowadays. So we yeah. uh, to see where it uh, best reads. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah, maybe creating new configuration as code seek could be also an option, but yeah, I think it's overkill. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I think that's it. Yeah. So anything else about that? Okay. So we have something like 15 minutes left. So I guess I can just transfer uh, the presentation to you, Sladin. So you can uh, do a quick update on uh, community bridge. Yeah, so I think in community bridge, most of the work that we have done till now dealt with, um, I think I could share my screen if you're not, all right? Yeah, please do so. Yeah, so I think uh, where we are with community bridge is like we're uh, we handling uh, nested nested YML structures. So I think Joseph suggested that we could actually go ahead with a describe structure kind of a, a sort of a function in every um, in every in every configurator, and that would make it much easier for us um, to be able to transfer the entire uh, base configurator and attributes to to JSON, and then probably build the structure from there. So um, actually, the problem that we are facing currently is, uh, and I wanted to ask. Um, Ask Joseph that since we are generating the schema and we call describe structure and iterate over the nodes, we would need to decide whether we add the required label to each one of them. Because if we add the required label to the sub attributes, then it would mean that the, uh, that the user has to compulsorily uh, include them into the YML. And if they aren't, then um, because otherwise, if we don't include them, then there would be no checks done. So suppose if the, suppose if it is tool and we have Git and we have installations and if we don't require installations in Git and we just make a typo, then that doesn't get picked up by the schema. But if we actually include them, then the user has to compulsorily uh, add them. So that was one point that maybe Joseph could uh, could elaborate on. So here it would it most likely depend on how people have defined non nulls and all that all those things. Yeah, for, for some for something like Git and installations, that is probably the only property that can exist inside the Git object, as I recall. And then yeah. I guess that would be required, or but it doesn't have to be required because it can just end up when you do your edit, when you're inside your ID, it will come up as a suggestion. So yeah. it doesn't have to be required. Yep. But any so, property that is a non-null value, on like for instance under installer, I think a name is required. Um, or it could be, let's say name is, is required, like it's a, it's a non-null, it can't be null, uh, and it's in the data constructor, it's not in the, it's not a data bound set, then it has to be, like, then it has to be there, and it's required then. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, my question was, yeah, so since we would have to decide on what tools, what kind of sub-attributes are required and what sub-attributes aren't required. Uh, another thing that actually we that's, could go over. That's, yeah. Again, that's not actually us up to decide. It's depending on how the developer created the plugin, I guess. Yeah, true. Agreed. Yeah, we could come to that later once we actually go over the node. So yeah, one question, uh, since we're on the call, of course, uh, uh, is the describe structure. So uh, currently we would want to return all of the descriptors from the describe structure that include, that include the um, that include the configurator, this <laughs> configurator and its attributes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, okay, and I think that's, I think, about it. Um, could we use describe, yeah, as I, as we were discussing in the chat. No, we could because, use because what, what you actually have already done is you, I think you're filtering out null, non nulls, right? And that's incorrect. Yep. You shouldn't, because you need the whole data structure. So you cannot filter out objects that might be null. Because they might they might be actually they might be just a class that says 
uh, like you can, in in SM uh, don't think but there, there are some uh, I know there's some plugins that act like they have their the class as like a behavior that makes something happen. So if you filter those out, then the data structure doesn't have or the it will be missing from the possible schema, I guess. Okay, so if I if I don't filter out non-nulls and I map the nodes, uh, would I be able to return them as scalars? Like uh, just a like just be then it then would just be a scalar, yeah. That is like just have a key name and no 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 value maybe, and, but it's still of course in here you need the type, so it, it would be a type of some class object I guess. Exactly, yeah. So maybe if we return the scalar, would that would that be beneficial? Because then we could just yes. iterate over this and get the type. Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. Sounds interesting. Uh, another thing that uh, would would the C node here currently return uh, only the base, only the root objects for the hetero describable configurator? Uh, no, because for each node you have to go and look, or for each you you have to convert to node, right? So that will convert everything to a node, and it goes over all the the configurators and keeps doing that till it gets to like the end. So it will okay, loop through. So so it will do the recursive lookup for you. Okay, and uh, once I get the uh, node, the C node, I could iterate over each and every node in C node and get the attribute. Um, yes, you should be able to do that. Yes. Okay, and what if they have uh, like uh, one more question? Like, I have. So the, 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 the thing are, is, the attribute is also a configurator, so that's why you will get them in the end. You will have attributes that that are that are configurators, so you will be able to figure out what they are. Okay, cool. I think that. Uh, yeah, I think that that answers most of my questions. I think do I, I don't need to test for scalar, right? I just I could just I could just do a return. Yeah. Do I need to test? And how do I uh, call describe? I call describe structure in my schema generation, or I didn't. Do I need to pass it a hetero describable configurator object? So so I think it. inside the schema generator you will do as you did before, but instead you will just reduce it to only call like for all the root uh, configurators you will just yeah. call describe structure. And then describe yep. structure will ensure that you get the you will get down into hetero configurator because that is also that will also have a describe structure function, so yep. it will just go through all of them. Yeah, cool, got it. Yeah, that that sounds cool. Too. Yeah, it will do Thanks exactly the same way as how we do YAML the ex or the YAML yep. descriptions, but instead just for getting all the types and all the type data. Yep, cool, cool, cool. Thanks a lot, Joseph. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, apart from that, yeah, one more, the next point that I wanted to discuss, I think I've included in here yeah, is um, the document updation. Uh, I think, yeah, you suggested, Oleg, that uh, we are going to um, have a look at this. Uh, one second. Yeah, yeah, this one. Um, we discussed this, I think, today. Yeah, you said that we would have as a beta feature instead of production ready. Yeah, uh, what you so, probably will end up doing is that you will mark generate schema as beta, and you would probably could mark the describe structure as beta, and then, yeah. Yeah, so we yeah. talk about uh, doing any kind of breaking changes until we consider it finalized. <gasps> and uh, taking the fact that the current schema doesn't work at all anyway, uh, it's yep. the, you no know, big deal with it. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It doesn't work anyway, so. <laughs> so do we do do you want me to make any changes in documentation and submit a PR or is that is that like no priority? No, I think uh, you do it the uh, better. Cool, cool. I think yeah. Um, any the last point that I think needed to discuss is um, yeah, the blog post for end of phase one. It's the last part. Yeah, once we have uh, schema generation uh, working somewhat, yeah, cool. uh, with nice thing, etc., it definitely makes sense to have a blog post for that. Yep, done. Um, yeah, that's it for me, I think. Thanks a lot, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just to add uh, some bits, um, yeah, Sladin had a presentation uh, this Monday at the Jenkins Online Meetup. So we were doing some project demos uh, for multiple projects. And yeah, if you want to watch uh, this demo, you can just go to the linked uh, YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, yeah. we will yeah. likely have another demo next week, uh, maybe on Thursday or Friday. 
So if you have some progress there to show. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I would love to be a part of that meeting. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. Because at least if we can get kind of the describe structure working for every configurator, we might just have to tweak it a bit here and there and we might have the schema ready. So yeah, the testing framework would be an issue. Yeah, that would, that would take maybe, uh, maybe by the end of the phase one, exactly. Uh, but I think, yeah, maybe I could present something for the demo. Do include me in the list, actually. I would, I would. Um, okay, be I'll happy. set your the room. Yeah, cool. Thanks a lot. Okay, anything else to discuss today? No. I think we're good. I think yeah, we're good. Okay, then yeah, just keep working, sliding. Uh, yeah, we yeah, yeah. have some uh, time uh, till the end of phase one. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we will need to, to work with Joseph and team to understand how we do the evaluation. Uh, because, yeah, it, uh, yeah, so I guess it would be a kind of JSOC way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, not a problem. Absolutely. Yeah, right now just focus on uh, getting uh, the pull request over the line and if you have opportunity to ship uh, smaller scale changes like this, documentation uh, update or whatever, just to do that. Yeah, cool, cool. Thanks a lot. Maybe the simplest documentation could be, by the way, schema doesn't work <laughs> and we're working on it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, thanks everybody for participating. So this time uh, we were doing in Zoom so that uh, I will need to post it manually, uh, but yeah, I'll uh, try to do it within a couple of hours. Sure thing. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks everybody. I'll stop the recording and uh, enjoy reading Joel Spolsky <laughs> slide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling the stops uh, for the second half of the meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay. So, yeah. Stop. I'm stopping the recording.